This is Ryan with GameRoomSolutions.com and today I'm going to show you how to lay out arcade artwork um, using Photoshop. You can actually get Photoshop for free in CS2 which is an older version but it should work fine for any kind of layering that you want to do. Uh, so I'll have the link in the description but essentially you can download CS2 for free. It'll give you a serial number and all that kind of stuff so it's legit. You download it. Um, I'm doing this because for our Bar Top Arcade kit that we just released, we actually have five of the Photoshop files that come with it. And, and just to show you an example here, you would have the uh, the two sides, the uh, top marquee, the control panel, and then the button panel. So these five Photoshop files will come if you purchase this. But what I'm about to show you here, you know, it's it's if you create your own cabinet or if you have a cabinet you refurb and you're able to get it into Photoshop, these principles will all apply the same way. So. Uh, after you get Photoshop installed, the first thing you want to do is just get some pictures. So if you go out to Google, you can Google whatever you want, whatever your theme is. Uh, one thing that's that's good to do is if you hit search tools here and you change the size, you might change it to large or larger than 2 or 4 megapixels. Let's make a file a lot bigger, but these are going to be higher quality images. So I'll just hit 2 megapixel here for an example. So you can see there's a couple pictures of Mario or whatever. So um, click one of those, hit view image most of these it should give you a big image like that just right click and save it Let's just go ahead and save it out to my desktop um, I'll grab a some kind of wallpaper a lot of times you put the word wallpaper behind it uh, you'll get what you want so here's some different wallpapers here so I'll just grab a couple of these All right, so I got a few pictures here plus a Mario and I'll, and I'll show you what to do now. So again, if, if you get our Barcade kit, it's gonna come with the five Photoshop files that you need. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the left or the right. Um, and you might keep in mind how it's shaped depending on, uh, you know, how the picture is shaped that it might look better on the left or on the right or if you do that or do the same or whatever. <clears throat> so when you open it here, you'll see there's an overlay okay so there's a couple things to talk about here here's your layers over here so layers essentially if it's higher it's going to show up over what's below it if you're not used to Photoshop so if I drag this text note which is this make sure to leave about a half inch bleed line here if I drag that underneath the overlay it'll go away because now this gray is on top so if you're not familiar with that that's essentially how the layers work you can turn them on or turn them off just by the little eye there to view them or not view them so as the note says, make sure you leave about a half inch bleed. So on the sides, at least at least for our kid, on the sides, you're going to make sure this is exactly the size of the arcade. So when you lay your pictures out, you're going to want it to be about a half inch past that. And, and we'll do it as an example here. Now on the control panel, the marquee and the button panel, those you can go and do to size because we cut those to size whenever they come to you or if you want us to do them or however that is. But uh, So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and open those three files that I had that I downloaded so I can open all three of those at once so just to show you here I'll go ahead and uh, so these are the three artworks so I just have the arrow selected here so I'm gonna click one of these and hit control A to select the entire picture of this control C will copy of course I could just right click and hit copy but now I can just come over here and when I hit control V you'll see here it pasted it as a new layer so I want to make sure that that layer is underneath the overlay and then from there again the bigger the file to start with the better it's gonna look I can hold down the shift key if I want to and just grab a corner and start dragging it and it'll stay at scale um, so that's usually the best thing to do at first is you kinda of get it to where you want it at scale somewhat so if I let go of the shift key now I can just drag it you know however you want to fit it whatever looks best now notice when I'm pulling this here I'm pulling it at about a half an inch here's your rulers on the side about a half an inch past where it needs to go but that's how it needs to do so once it's stretched out like this I press the inner key so you can see that's a pretty good graphic there now I definitely want Mario in there and he's not in there that way so you can just start kinda of dragging it around to get it how you need it and again, this is why you want a big picture to start with. So there, that that looks pretty good. 
let's just say if that's if that's the image so now if you're turning these back into us so we can have them printed for you again they're printed on a adhesive vinyl that's bubble free and we have a video to show you how to go how to put that on but um, what I can do here is I can just take the overlay off and you can see it's the full picture there but this overlay just allows me to know exactly how it's gonna look on my cabinet and so at this point if this is all you wanted to do just a simple wallpaper you would go ahead and just hit file and then save this off and then this is the file you send us send it to us with all of the layers just as the Photoshop that you see here so that way when we go into print we'll actually turn these layers off and we have a, a, a different way so we can lay it out correctly to print it uh, but but don't like uh, merge all the layers or do anything like that just go ahead and leave the layers and leave it like this and send it in you're done uh, but I do want to show you here just uh, another thing so that was just a simple wallpaper so I'll go ahead and just close that file now let's find that uh, Mario file here so now this has some white border around it so this is really good for characters so if you wanted to overlay some other characters here I'll uh, you can hit the magic wand tool so if I hit that and I just click on the outside here you can see that it automatically since this is such a nice background it pulls Mario out but you can see I grabbed some of his M up here which I didn't want to do so if that happens you can just turn the tolerance down or up and then re-click it and a lot of times see that when I turn it down to 10 it didn't pull his M in there so so Mario looks good there so he's highlighted if I hit control X or, uh, or control C I mean to copy so I selected it control C again I hit my arrow over here come back control paste so you can see what that did is it did the opposite of what I wanted to because I've selected the outside of it here. So if I uh, get rid of that and I come back, all you have to do is hit select the inverse. Now it's selected the inside of what, of what I've highlighted with the magic wand there. So again, I'll hit control C to copy, control V to paste. And now you can see now I have my Mario character so I can place him wherever I want. I can adjust how big he is and so forth so that's really good if you're doing characters or uh, you know characters over top of an overlay or something like that that's how you're gonna want to do that the, so I'll go ahead and just press enter I'll just stick him there for now even though that doesn't look right the next thing you might want to do is create this little page flip right here is to create a new layer so I'll hit that now let's go ahead and put some text here so I'm gonna hit a text and of course you can this works like any other text editor I can just select some text I think I have one here called Nintendo if there's one that you want to get um, you know out on the web just go out there and search for free fonts and you can find something that'll look pretty close to what you want so now over here the top one this is the color so this is gonna actually show up in white which is fine if not I can click it and I can click like Mario's hat here and now it'll show up in that red that's fine we can just do that for now so when I click here I'll just type in um, um, you know barcade it doesn't matter what I type so you can see it's pretty small if I control a that'll select it all now I can just start making it bigger I can type in something so let's just do like a hundred font now nah, that's pretty good let's just do like a hundred and forty font okay 149 font so that's what I hit then you can just grab the arrow and you can move this wherever you want it to now one thing I'll say is sometimes that doesn't look that well it's better if you put a stroke on it so what a stroke does I'll show you here you see the little F when I press that and I can go to stroke now it comes up and the stroke is basically the border of the outline so I can change that I just push the color I can change it to color I'll just change it to this blue so it'll be real apparent what I'm doing here so you can see it changed it to the blue and now if I just grab the stroke line you can see now that border the more that I drag it or the less that I drag it the more it'll put a border around it so that looks pretty good now I can now you can just start clicking all these different shadows and a lot of time the bevel looks pretty good if you do that so you can see that looks a lot different so just get that how you like it press OK and that's how you can add text over these as well um, the next thing I want to show here so that looks pretty good so again just say save, save as keep it as the Photoshop file and you can upload that as you're right and we'll take care of all the layers and make sure that it prints properly for you but um, so I'm going to go ahead and close that out. I won't save the changes to it. And I'll grab the control panel. So now here's the control panel. Same thing with the overlay. And again, on this one, um, 
I actually can take that note out. You don't need to leave a bleed because these will be cut directly to size. It's the sides that, that you worry about a little bit more. So, so I have the overlay here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you one more trick here. Control. So I, I clicked on the picture I wanted, control A to select it all, control C to copy, and then control V as in Victor to paste. You can see that this is way bigger than the control panel, so you can simply just drag it to the size that you need. And one thing I'm going to show you here, and you can see how it's not behind the overlay. I'll press enter. All you have to do is just, again, drag it under the overlay. So I can make this the full size. If I just wanted my control panel, you know, I could just drag it like that and then uh, drag it across. But what I actually want to do is show you how to, if you want to do a fade to merge some pictures together. So this won't look the best, but just to show you here. So I'm going to go ahead and reopen that other wallpaper. So I can grab this one as to uh, this one as well. Control A, Control C to copy it, and then Control V to paste it. So you can see there. That one's on there as well. So if I wanted to fade these two together, I could kind of put one over top of the other depending on which way I wanted it to fade. So let's just say that that looks good. And what I'm going to want to do is, is hit this layer mask button. So when I push that, it essentially creates a mask. And you'll see what that does here in a second. And then if you right click over here where the paint bucket is and go to gradient tool, what this will do is you just start it kind of however far you want and, you, and you'll be able to play with it. So you can see I went the wrong direction there. So you can just keep kind of messing with it until you get the fade you want. See that's not enough fade for these two pictures. So if you start deeper in the picture it'll do more of the fade. So you can see that. You can see the picture underneath isn't quite big enough. So if I click that layer I could drag that picture a little further so I don't have that look. Then I can come back here. So press enter. Anytime you change the size, you got to press enter. So you can see that now it's kind of fading in and fading out. If you wanted to continue to do layers in different directions as well, if you press this folder button here, it'll add a group to it. Click on the group and then click the layer mask again. So you can see I just put that inside that folder. And then here's the group. And then again, I just go back and grab the gradient tool. Now let's say I want to do it from the top. So I can kind of a second here. Where is that full screen? You see how, okay, so I had to grab this layer if it wasn't in there already. I grabbed the previous layer and I drug it to the folder. So now that it's in the group, and now again, I click on the group because this is where I'm wanting to do my fade. And you can see I'm coming in from the top. Now it's doing a fade from the top. So now it's doing it from the sides and the top. So you can do it multiple directions. A lot of times you'll want to do it from all four sides because you'll want, um, that line that's so good right there, see between the two, you'll want to you'll want to kind of make sure and fade enough of that that you can get rid of that line like that. So essentially, I started back in this picture and I just went just past where you could see that line, and I just let go, and that'll kind of do a fade. So you can see how that faded the two together. The next thing, just to show you real quick, what I like. So a lot of guys ask for, and we have the inserts that we'll provide at no cost if you have like light up buttons or whatever that'll show the one and the two player. I think it all looks a lot better if you actually just put it on your artwork if you're doing the artwork. So for example, I can come in here and I can I can add add a layer again if I wanted to. I'll just drag it up out of there. So here's the layer. Uh, it should just do a text layer if you click as well. But I could click right here and I could type in coin, right? So that's obviously way too big. It's still set on the one before. So let's try like a 35 font. That looks pretty good. Um, maybe a 30 font, whatever. So now I can drag that coin there. Again, it looks like crap, so I can come in, I can add a stroke. Um, maybe I want to change the stroke color this time to Yoshi Green. Press OK, and then I can drag this for how thick that'll be. I can add some of my layers if I want. After I lay those, now I'm going to adjust that down a little bit so it looks good. So uh, one trick to this too, just to show you, if you want to make sure all these line up just right, is you can just click on the ruler at the top and drag down a guideline to that. And that guideline, it won't show up in the print. It's just something for you to help get a guide on. Then I could come over here and right click my coin, duplicate the layer. And when I do, 
there's actually another coin on top. You can see here, coin copy. So I can just push the right arrow if I want to, or I can grab and drag it. Uh, I would not grab and drag it unless you have this guideline here because it, it might be hard to get it there. If you don't have the guideline, I would just push the right arrow so I could come in here and I could, you know, hit my text arrow again and then just click on that coin since I have that coin copy layer selected. I can click on that, highlight it all, and then say like start. So you can see when I put the word start there, it was a little too big for the start in the coin. So it might make sense here if I go ahead and said, all right, that's too much. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that down to like a 22 font or whatever. So click that one, click the uh, text of the coin, and bring that down to 22, whatever. So you can see there, and again, you'll just line those back up. Um, so I can just click off of it, and you can see there. That guideline, if you want to get rid of it, you just go to View unclick the extras and that'll go away there. So that shows you how to do a fade, how to do the overlay. Again, I definitely suggest doing this uh, coin and start, coin and start, and then on the four button panels, at least on our kits, you know, I would do like um, exit, mode, favorites, and play, or, or exit, um, you know, genre, favorites, pause, what, however you want to set up your buttons for if you're using, you know, emulation station or hyperspin or whatever. But this is some basic photoshopping here. Now again, when I when I take the overlay off, that's kind of what it looks like. So that's why the overlay is there, so you can get a real good idea of, of where you're putting all of your words and your buttons. You can see that starts actually a little low, so I can move it up to where it needs to be or whatever. So again, you can get the CS2 Photoshop. That's what this is, even though, yes, this is 2015 when I'm shooting this video. But um, you can get that. You can do everything that you need to do for our kits. You would just, again, save this, leave it as all the layers. Go ahead and just send it to us like that. Uh, we have instructions on how to send it to us uh, when you buy it, and then you get access to these as well. Um, so just send it to us. We'll be able to uh, print these out on a high-quality print. I'll put a link in the description on how to actually put on the adhesive vinyl graphics and some of the things that go with that. Uh, I'll put a link to the bar tops if, if you do have interest in that. Uh, past that, visit GameRoomSolutions.com, and make sure and like this video. Thanks.